Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, and I have a very special episode for you today. So a couple of weeks ago, someone sent me an audio clip of someone absolutely flipping out on a phone call to a telemarketer, and I put that in a video, and I've actually gotten some other submissions from fans since then. And I got one today that is definitely worth listening to. I'm putting the entire audio at the very end of the video because I know not everyone will be into it, but here's a quick preview. I want to know who you heard it from. I want to know who you heard it from. Our next Reddit post is from War Switch. I'm in the UK and the legal alcohol drinking age is 18 here. Yes, there are nuances that I'm obviously aware of, but these don't apply in this instance. I work in an extremely busy pub that sells drinks and takeaway cups to drink outside. An especially popular option in the summer when this story happened. I'm a female, late 20s. An entitled mother and kid comes into the busy bar. I clocked them when they walked in. Kid looks around 15 years old. When she's ordering her drinks to take away, the kid is outside. She ordered a pint of scrumpy, which is strong, still, traditional cider, and a Coke without saying a word, dispassionately prodding the signage with her manicured finger without even registering my existence. I repeat her order back to her, pour her drinks, and tell her how much. She ignores my offered hand and drops a note and a pile of coins on the bar, barely within awkward reach. I politely ask her if she wouldn't mind putting the coins in my hand. She ignores me and says, keep the change, and walks out. After she leaves, I awkwardly pretzel myself around many ale pumps to fumblingly pick up the coins around the bar, count them out, finish the transaction in the till, and pop an extra five cents in the tip jar. Then, go on to serve the next customer. A few minutes later, I am aware of her beckoning me from over at the no service end of the bar, holding the pint of scrumpy. I make eye contact and give her a nod, then turn to finish serving the customer I've just poured a drink for. Her from across the room. Excuse me? Hang on one minute please, I'm just serving this man. Excuse me? I finish serving the man. Is everything okay? The entitled mother thrusts the pint into my hands. This cider is completely flat. Uh, sorry for the confusion, but it's a traditional scrumpy and it's meant to be flat. The entitled mother interrupting patronizingly. I know what cider is supposed to be like. This is flat. I want you to pour another one in a fresh glass and put some life in this one. Can I suggest you might want to try a different cider? We have a hard cider on keg that might be more what you're expecting. I ordered what I wanted. What I was expecting was that you might know how to pour a pint. Do you want to try again or shall I ask him to pour it for me? She points at my male colleague. Excuse me? My son barely had a sip of that and he won't even drank it. Me, now shocked. You gave that to your kid? Entitled mother, sputtering a little. Y yeah, well, he's over 18. Is he? I'd seen him. He certainly didn't look a day over 15. Entitled mother must have noticed at this point that she was onto a loser because the next thing you know, she's gesturing towards the pint of scrumpy still in my hands. Oh, just give it back. I don't have time for this. I'm sorry, but I can't do that. I have paid for that. I get the money, plus her five cents tip from the till and extend it towards her. She won't take it. I want the drink I paid for. If you can come in with your son and a valid photo ID proving he is of late, the entitled mother with bits of spit flying, he is my son. He doesn't need an ID. I'm with him. I am his mother. Sorry, but it's the law. Please take your money. I don't want an argument. Fine, it's for me. I place the cider on the back of the bar, out of her reach, close my eyes, and take a deep breath. Three, two, I want to speak to your manager. Yup, there it is. I haven't even opened my mouth to tell her that I am the manager before she's striding over to my male colleague, who has clearly been rubbernecking while serving customers and cannot wait to get involved. I need to complain about your employee. She has no customer service skills and clearly doesn't know how to pour a pint. My colleague can barely keep a straight face. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'll make sure she's fired immediately. Now you'll pour a decent pint, won't you? No, my pints are garbage. 
What? Not gonna do it. <laughs> 8% Scrumpy isn't the best gateway alcohol for kids, by the way. Just saying. The entitled mother sputters and storms out, muttering something about leaving a bad online review. I, t <laughs> I turn to my colleague and say his name reprimandingly. Colleague, you shouldn't have said that. Sorry, couldn't help it. You shouldn't have said your pints are garbage. You pour a lovely pint. When you're rude to someone in customer service and tell them to remake your order and put some life in it, isn't that just code for saying remake my order and put some spit into it? Our next Reddit post is from Satanists in Love. Four years ago, I met Nick at a cafe and two years later, we started dating. The year of dating, he proposed on Valentine's Day. Now, his mother doesn't like me. Mostly because I'm not religious and I do my own thing. Even though Nick left religion before he met me, she blames me for bringing Lucifer into his life. We're having a gothic graveyard wedding on Halloween. Mostly our wedding of our dreams. We love Halloween and old graveyards. We asked and as long as we don't disrespect graves or anything, we're allowed to have a wedding there. Wedding Planner did an amazing job with everything, including finding a new reception venue when the other one canceled. Might be going to court for that one. We sent out invites to everyone, including his mother. This is the text I got. Why aren't you getting married in a church? That's my dream for him. Because we're not religious and the graveyard wedding was his idea. So I'm going to look horrible because my son is marrying a demon girl. Entitled mother-in-law, I'm sorry that you feel that way. It's our day, so please put our differences aside for your son and come to the wedding. Everything went downhill. The wedding planner called me and asked if I change my flowers to real ones and have my theme change. My mother-in-law literally got a hold of my wedding planner and told her that I wanted a traditional wedding now and to find a church. Thankfully, I cleared up and made a password to make sure entitled mother-in-law can't do more damage. She told everyone that she's the groom's mother and it's her day. I said, can you please stop ruining your son's wedding? We worked very hard to have this day. If you can't stop, you won't be invited. Nick is very stressed out because of you and it's not fair. It's my day, not his. You are a demon girl ruining his life. He shouldn't even ask you to marry him. Then OP posted part two. Okay, my wedding happened and she came. Not only that, she objected to the marriage. Let's start this because I'm still mad and I'm back from the honeymoon. My wedding day, it was a beautiful day. I have on my black wedding dress and did a first look. He cried and he kissed me. Nick and his groomsmen were at the altar waiting for the music. Anthem lights wedding medley. The aisle walk was beautiful, and I noticed entitled mother-in-law in the crowd wearing a white dress. I just kept calm and just looked at Nick. We actually did the vows from Corpse Bride, and when the person doing the wedding asked if anyone objects, my mother-in-law runs up and held my husband. She prayed that he'll leave me and go home. I was shocked, and she tried to drag him away. You don't love her. It was a phase. Come home and go back to church. We'll find better. Nick said, Mom, don't you see that I love her and she's carrying your grandchild? She's not a demon. She's so amazing. She pulled me out of depression. She brought the light to me when I was afraid to leave the darkness. Why can't you see that? If it wasn't for her, I think I'd be dead because no one else in the world understands me like she does. Depression is just in your head. She's carrying a demon child. God will save you. Leave. Just go and leave us alone. You're not welcome in our lives till you can accept her. You'll never see your first grandchild till you do. You can't do that. She left and the wedding went on as planned. The reception venue was beautiful and the food was amazing. The photographer took beautiful pictures. I married my soulmate and best friend. Honestly, sorry it was short and wasn't exciting, but she won't be around for a long time. Maybe she might accept us or live her life not knowing her grandchild. It's on her. Our next Reddit post is from Road Ode Load. I'm a cocktail waitress. I'm seven months pregnant. No, obviously, I don't drink while pregnant or drink on the job ever. 
A woman, the Karen, comes in with what I'm assuming was her husband and son and daughter and asked to be seated for lunch. We're not really a restaurant, but we have a really small sandwich and wings menu. I get the menus and Karen says, but wait, do you work here? Yep. But you're pregnant. You can't work here if you're pregnant. I work here. I don't drink here, I say with a laugh, trying to keep the mood light. The woman looks me over and says, have you taken any prenatal courses? Do you really think that's responsible to have your unborn baby in here? This is where I made an error. I get defensive about anyone asserting I'm a bad mother, obviously. So I said, well, you've brought your kids in here. Yes, and what kind of example do you think you're setting for them? I'm still collecting my thoughts at this point when they grunt and wave me away. I figure I can kiss my tip goodbye, but hopefully that'll be the end of the discussion. I see them flagging down the bartender after a few minutes and figure they're ready, so go over. Karen asks to speak to the manager. Now, they haven't even gotten drinks yet, so I ask if there's anything I can help them with, and her husband, Mr. Karen, says really sternly, No, just a manager. Didn't you hear my wife? This place is too small for a manager. It's just servers and bartenders and two owners. The one who's working is in the back on a phone call and will be pissed if I go and bother her. I realize maybe they're still uncomfortable with my being pregnant, so say, maybe Ella, the other server, can help? Karen gets up to physically look for the manager. I admit to feed and go back and drag her off the call. The owner goes over with a big smile and asks if there's anything she can help them with. Your server is pregnant! The owner says she's aware and asks if they prefer a different server. No, no, no. She can't be a drink girl if she's pregnant. That's child abuse. The owner says, I assure you, none of our employees drink on the clock, especially not our pregnant ones. If you'd prefer, I can have Ella serve you. I don't want my kids seeing this. Maybe I'm missing something. Seeing what exactly? Karen talking really slowly and condescendingly. A pregnant woman around all this alcohol. I don't know what you're insinuating, but I would never drink during pregnancy. Look, honey, didn't you take a health class in junior high? With the drink under you half the time, alcohol vapor is absorbed into your blood through the air, and then that blood goes to the fetus and poisons it. The owner and I exchange a look and realize we won't get anywhere with her. So we can have Ella serve you, or I'm afraid there's not much else we can do. We're not leaving until she's fired. We can't help you. I'll call the police. You're an accomplice to child abuse. There is no child abuse to speak of, sir. Please leave. Karen, starting to get crocodile tears. You may not think a fetus is a child, but I was taught to believe life begins at conception and I will stand up for all living things, big and small, because that is what my Lord and Savior wants me to do. The entire time she's delivering this tearful speech, she's looking around expecting others to, I don't know, join in with her? Applaud? You're disturbing my customers, and if you don't leave, you're trespassing, and I'll have to escalate this, which I really don't want to do. Jesus is love, and Jesus said this is not okay. Just because you think it's okay to abuse a child if it's small enough. This is an Irish pub, and the owners are devout Catholics. She wasn't having any of this. Hey, I don't need anyone to tell me what Jesus said. If there was abuse here, I'd have acted to stop it, but there isn't any. I need you to please leave. I'm calling the police. Do that. We just stopped trying to service their table. As we all wait for the cops to arrive, Karen keeps trying to give her sermon, but there was a game on that people had come to watch, and eventually everyone yelled at her until she piped down. Enter Awesome Officers 1 and 2. This is Officer 1 of the town name police department. Is there a Mr. Karen in here somewhere? Right here, officers. You said you were witnessing child abuse. Are the parties involved still at the bar? They point me out. I pretend not to notice because I'm worried they'll take them outside and I won't be able to watch any more fireworks. The second officer approaches me. So, what exactly was going on? That woman was drinking. She's pregnant. You can plainly see she's very pregnant. Before I can go over and tell them she's lying about my drinking, the officers look at each other and look back at the Karen family. That's not illegal. What? Look here now. 
It's definitely not recommended, but it isn't illegal. Now, do you know this woman? Is she a friend of yours? Family? She works here in a bar and she's pregnant. I want to see this place's liquor license revoked. So listen, she isn't doing anything illegal. What I can do is I will talk to her, but we can't take any action beyond that. Is there anything else you observe that you'd like to report? So Officer 2 comes over to me and takes me to a quiet spot while Officer 1 is getting their personal information and taking the rest of the statement. Karen is crying again and I assume bemoaning being the last bastion of good Christian morality in this bar. Officer 2 introduces himself and congratulated me on the pregnancy and says I probably overheard why they were called and starts to offer me some public resources for new mothers, parenting classes, etc. I didn't want to interrupt him, so I was waiting for the right moment to interject with my innocence. That's when patrons come over thinking I'm in trouble and start defending me. We have plenty of regulars who know me and they would not let this BS stand. They even complained to the officers that the owner had asked the Karen party to leave and they'd continued to make a scene. So awesome officers go talk to the owner who said she was just about to call them but sirens outside are bad for business and she was hoping the Karens would eventually leave on their own. The officers tell the Karen party they need to leave. This is a public place. I have every right to be here if I want. No, sir. This is a private business and the business owners have asked you to leave. It sounds like more than once, but at least once since we've been here. This is a disgrace. This is an affront to, to, to scripture and child safety and... I understand you're upset. Let's talk about it outside. He places a hand on Mr. Karen and gives him a firm look. This next part was said as Mr. Karen walks out backwards so he can keep yelling at us but bumping into things every step of the way. I'll be contacting the authorities about your liquor license. I happen to be close personal friends with the mayor. And you two, I want badge numbers. Don't think we're done here because we haven't even started. So the officers took them out and as it was told to me by a regular who left around the same time, walked to Karen's to their car, which was illegally parked in a handicapped space for which they were ticketed. They did make a complaint to the liquor authority claiming among many things that, <laughs> that we served minors and we were investigated, but obviously came up fine. My boss asked me to hold off sharing this story with anyone until the matter was settled, but now it is, so I had to share. Still laughing about it. Honestly, this was such a relief to read. All this time I've been drinking alcohol when apparently I can get drunk just by smelling it. Think of all the money I'll save. Our next Reddit post is from Vote Dog. I'm a migraine sufferer and they pop up at the worst possible times. One Halloween a few years ago, I had a terrible one and had to ditch the idea of answering the door for trick-or-treaters. Since I was so sensitive to light and noise, I turned off our porch light, other house lights, and went to bed. As soon as it got dark, it started. My doorbell ringing over and over even though there were no lights on in the house. Every time it happened, my dogs would go nuts, making even more noise and making me hurt even more. I ignored it for as long as I could, but when someone leaned on the doorbell and rang it over and over and over again, I finally flew out of bed and ripped the door open, ready to go off. I expected a kid to be the one ringing the bell, but it was a Karen. Behind her were two little kids, dressed adorably holding pillowcases. I said, what the F lady? Porch light off is the international sign for no candy. The entitled mother acts as if she's unearthed an amazing secret. I knew you were home. She shoes the kids up to me and they yell out trick or treat and thrust their pillowcases at me. I had a huge bag of candy in the kitchen, but I was so upset I totally forgot about it. Girls, I'm sorry, but I don't have any candy. That's why my porch light was off. I say to the entitled mother, I don't feel well. I purposefully turned off my light so that I wouldn't be disturbed by children tonight. You shouldn't be knocking on doors with no lights on. It's Halloween. Surely you can suck it up for a few hours to do something that makes children smile. How can you not have any candy? I'm sure you have something in your kitchen you can give them. My head is throbbing. I can't believe this woman. Something in my kitchen? Yes, what else do you have that you can give them since you weren't prepared? 
The kids can sense that I'm frustrated and angry. They start to walk down the driveway away from us, hoping their mom would follow them to a house that actually has candy. You better go get your kids, they're leaving. Not until you give them something. They're owed that. It's Halloween, you selfish jerk. She calls them to come back to the porch. They reluctantly wander closer. Okay, fine. I got a bottle of ketchup or a box of noodles. How about a frozen burrito or a pack of oatmeal? Does that fit your criteria? Get off my property. This is absurd. You're the absurd one. My kids deserve Halloween treats and you couldn't even be bothered to pick any up. I'm going to tell other parents about you so they avoid your house. I laughed out loud. Promise? Yay. Thanks. That would be very helpful. And I slammed the door in her face. I did feel bad for her kiddos. They've got a terrible mom. OP, there was really only one way to handle that. Just turn on the sprinklers. That was our slash entitled parents. And now let's get into this crazy phone call. So a little bit of context on this. The person who sent me this audio clip is the relative of the angry woman. And this person gave me full permission to use it, even though that the woman is very concerned about privacy. Apparently they don't mind sharing this video on the internet. But basically the context is that the woman on the other end of the phone is basically a nosy busybody in the community. And she just goes around spreading rumors about OP's family being poor and not being able to afford stuff and giving her her home address to strangers. So then when strangers show up at their doorstep asking to buy stuff, this woman gets really pissed and justifiably so. And this is the ensuing phone call. Hello. Joy. Yeah. This is There was a guy. Yeah, from the neighborhood. There was a guy who just showed up at my door who said that you told him that I was in financial trouble, that my boat was for sale, and that it was being towed tomorrow. No, I did not say that. What did you I say? Told your boat, I told him that uh, the rumor in the neighborhood is that you can't put your boat in there because you don't have the money to put it in the uh, uh, fenced area. I said it's been sitting here for how long, I don't know. But I said other boats have been towed because they were sitting there. I, and I said, so I don't know if she's got a range of But I didn't tell him your boat was for sale. No. I, I said, I don't know. How do you know? How do you know? It's rumored in the neighborhood. Would why, would you, why would you go around spreading something that you have no idea whether or not it's even true? But why would you do that? Why would you spread my personal business, whether you, and, and the fact that you don't even, you're admitting that you don't even know whether or not it's true is absolutely deplorable. What business is it of yours? It's not your business. And if I'm telling you right now, if you got any information from the HOA, I swear to God, I will sue them because you should have no idea what's going on with me. None, zero, zilch. I don't talk to the HOA. It's none of your business, Joy. I'm sorry. I just heard rumors. And so you decided to spread them whether you had any idea whether it was even true. What kind of person are you? I guess according to you, I'm pretty bad. Does, I mean, how would you feel if I just, you know, somebody told me something horrible about you and I just went to people and, and told them that, hey, I don't know whether uh, you know or not, but, you know, Joy actually was a man at one point. I mean, who would do that? I'm sorry. I didn't. He didn't. He didn't. Do you have any idea how that humiliates me? I will go over and talk to the guy and 
It's not your business. Here's what I'm going to tell you, Joy. Don't go talk to that guy. But A, you gave him my address. You told him who I was and where I lived. He doesn't know who the boat belongs to. You told him who the boat belongs to. Well, he asked me who it belongs to, so I told So some random guy shows up to my house. I live alone. And you sent him here. Whether inadvertently or advertently, whether directly or indirectly, you sent him to my house. I did not send him to your house. I did not send him to your house. If he didn't know who, if he did not know who the boat belonged to, Joy, he would not have shown up at my door. Is that not correct? Is that your business? Sorry, is it your business to tell somebody? Are you a member of the board? Hell no. I wouldn't be on this board. Are you kidding me? No way. So, I don't even talk to these board members anymore. I don't have anything to do with the board. Nothing. Believe me. I've tried to get stuff like cars Hey, Joy, I'm going to give you just, wait, wait, stop. Just for one second, I'm going to give you one little piece of information, okay? Just so you know, the HOA, it is not intended or meant to be a neighborhood police watch. That's not what it's for. It's to actually litigate and to do things for an extreme situation. You're not, the HOA is not supposed to act as like the freaking neighborhood police. So maybe you're a little confused. You guys running around on golf carts, noting to people where people make vi uh, minor violations. It's not your concern. My business is not your concern. And it's evident that you should never be a part of the HOA for this very reason. You're, it's not your business to spread anything that has to do with me. It's actually, it's rude, it's inconsiderate, and you've actually humiliated me. But I guess you don't care about that. What the hell do you think he was asking you for? You told him the boat might be for sale because I'm in financial trouble and that the boat couldn't be put in the yard because I couldn't afford $150. That's what you told him. So here's what I want you to tell me. So here's what I want you to tell me. You're telling me that you only repeated what you heard. I want to know who you heard it from. I want to know whose lips you got that from. Where did you hear it from? Oh, it's all over the neighborhood. I want to know who you heard it from. I want to know who you heard it from. I am not repeating that. Oh, you'll repeat my business, but you won't tell me who told it to you. What sense does that make, Joy? You will repeat my personal business, whether or not you know it's true, but you won't tell me who told you. You know why? Because my suspicion is that it's probably Steve on the board. You know what? I don't know how in the world you couldn't think that I have every right to holler at you.
You just told me that you repeated something that A, you didn't know whether or not it was true, and B, you admit you had no right to freaking repeat in the first place. I'm sorry, I will not mention your name or anything about you ever again. That would be really smart of you. It shouldn't have mattered, Joy. It's still another human being that you told my personal business to. I've gone through probably the worst two years of my life. Not that you give a shit, but I've gone through a divorce and I've had all kinds of issues. Do you care about that? No. Have you ever knocked on my door and actually asked me if I needed something? No. Try being neighborly, Joy. Try being a part of the neighborhood that way instead of riding around in your goddamn golf cart looking for violations. Try doing that. Try knocking on a door and asking somebody if they need some fucking help. How about that? Seriously, you need to look in the mirror. and I survived, so... Well, you know what? I hope and pray. I'm pretty sure that they didn't have people like you doing what you're doing to me, to you. I'm sorry. I have no idea he was going to do what he did. I'm really sorry. <laughs> it shouldn't have mattered. Unbelievable. I'm really sorry. Um, I will make sure he doesn't say another word to anybody else. And you I'm need to leave that man alone. Do you hear me? I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, do not talk to that man because he has nothing to do with it. He was nice. He was gracious. The only person who knows that they were freaking humiliated was me. And hopefully now you. It's not his problem, Joy. It's actually your problem and my problem. He has nothing to do with it. Leave him out of this. It just so happens that you did the wrong thing. So accept the blame for it and move on. Don't involve him in it any further. Like I said, I will not say speak your or your your name ever again. Thanks. I appreciate that. Have a good night. <laughs> The crazy thing about this is that this woman doesn't seem to realize what she did wrong. She's like, well, when I spread those terrible rumors about you, how was I supposed to know he was going to come to your house? Lady, it doesn't matter if you knew whether or not he was going to come to the house. What matters is that you were spreading these awful rumors about someone. Just keep your mouth shut. What on earth is wrong with you?